So there are two methods for installing LTSP on an Ubuntu system. Um, the first one is a little bit easier, a little bit more streamlined. Um, it's installing an LTSP environment directly from your installation media um, with the Ubuntu alternate CD. Uh, basically it's a customized installation uh, in which you can configure everything as far as LTSP right off the bat when you're installing the Ubuntu operating system. Um, this video is going to focus on installing it onto an already running Ubuntu system. Um, and we're basically going to be running a few commands, uh, configuring a few files, and basically verifying everything works. It's uh, also a very straightforward install. The people over at uh, Canonical and the open source community have made it very, very easy to install these types of systems. So basically the first thing that we need to do is install the LTSP environment. What we're going to do is install an environment which includes our own DHCP server, um, there's another method to install an LTSP server environment um, in which you would have an external existing DHCP server. Um, the package that you're going to use to install the full LTSP including DHCP server is LTSP server standalone. And the second package that we need to install that's pivotal to um, LTSP is OpenSSH server. So we're going to pull these guys down. I had downloaded these previously so it doesn't actually show them downloading from the Ubuntu repositories. Now we're going to see when we start this DHCP server that it's going to fail. And the reason that it fails is because we need to configure the DHCP.conf uh, file to adhere to our specific network. Um, so what we're going to do is edit that DHCP configuration file that's specific to LTSP. and that's the file name that we want to go for. So basically the default configuration file has configuration options for the network 192.168.0.0 with a basically a slash 24 a CIDR network. Um, we're going to take this out. I'm going to configure this for my specific network which is 10.0.2.0 with the same net mask. Uh, you're going to want to obviously configure this for your own network. So don't put all this stuff in here unless you have this exact same network. I'm going to give us a DHCP range of 200 to 250. I'm going to rename our domain here. We want our DNS servers to adhere as well, which should be 10.0.2.3 for my network. Our broadcast address dot two dot two fifty five our routers also known as a gateway dot two this stuff here we can ignore because it's commented out um, everything else should be okay this code down here is basically specific to LTSP um, the DHCP server receiving requests from uh, pixie booting clients which is what LTSP uses um, it's a network boot protocol uh, that pulls everything down via DHCP TFTP and a few other protocols um, before it actually connects to um, the server session for GNOME or whatever your window manager uh, desktop environment is. So we're going to go ahead and save this file and we're going to start our DHCP server again. And we can see that it actually started this time since we configured the file. We see our DHCP daemon process running right here, which is nice. It's got our custom configuration file here. Now the next thing that we need to do is build our LTSP client file system. And to do that we run the command sudo LTSP build client. What this does is pulls a bunch of packages down from the Ubuntu repositories that are specific for the LTSP client file system. And this is going to be what the clients use and connect to um, when they're booting up. This is basically g all going to be contained in a RAM disk as it's needed. Um, the protocol that's generally used uh, in Ubuntu, the standard, is NBD, which is the network block device. Um, Debian and some other distributions use NFS still, which used to be the standard. Um, they both have their benefits and drawbacks. NBD seems to be a little bit faster. 
um, but it's also not as tried and true as NFS, which has been around since a long, long, long time ago. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to wait for all this stuff to install, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, we're basically almost done with uh, the first round of package installations. This uh, command is actually going to be installing a few rounds, what I would call anyway, um, of packages. So we're basically getting all these guys down. It's been probably about 10 or 15 minutes um, installing so far. Um, this is the most lengthy part of the installation process. It's basically just downloading, configuring, and installing all of these packages for the client ch root file system. Um, so we're going to wait just a little bit longer. We'll see you in a second. Here we are uh, installing our second round of packages right here, which is a bunch of uh, Xorg video drivers. Just wanted to show you this real quick while we're installing our LTSP environment. And this will take a few more minutes, so we'll see you in a second. All right, here we are uh, installing the second round of packages here. It should take just a few minutes at the most. Uh, the third round, if I remember correctly, is the kernel itself for the client ch root, uh, which is just a generic Ubuntu kernel. Um, the reason that it doesn't build its own kernel is uh, basically that it's meant to be integrated as much as possible into the um, Linux distribution itself, which was the whole point of the LTSP5 um, version, was to create this uh, merging with the operating system instead of trying to configure everything for the client on its own. Um, this is beneficial because it leaves a lot of configuration up to the operating system itself. Um, it leaves a lot of uh, options for specific distributions to uh, turn on and off features and configurations uh, at their will. Um, so you get basically a more customized LTSP environment that way. So we're still installing this stuff here real quick. It's doing a lot of stuff in a non-interactive mode uh, with dpackage, uh, with configuration. And here we go with installing the uh, Linux kernel for the client ch root. Um, this will take just a little bit longer, so we'll see you in a minute. All right, here's the last part of the um, LTSP build client script. And what this is doing is actually creating the NBD image. Um, the NBD, again, is the network block device. Um, it's a protocol which is optimized and very simple. Uh, it's basically optimized for over the network uh, file systems. And that's what's used with Ubuntu by default for LTSP. It's very, very fast, very lightweight protocol um, for serving things like network file systems over a network. Um, so what this is doing is compressing the already configured LTSP ch root um, into a single file, which will then be served to LTSP connected clients as they boot up. Um, one common misconception is that everything in this block device is going to be transferred during boot up. That's not true. One of the great things about NBD is that it basically transfers things as it needs to be transferred. So you're not downloading an entire file system every time you turn on your computer. You're downloading everything that you need and you've got a constant connection to the LTSP server um, over the network for anything that you need. Um, seems to work very, very well for a lot of people. Um, like I said, Debian's uh, default installation still uses NFS, if I remember correctly. Um, the benefit of that is that it's very, very tried and true. Um, another great benefit is that you don't need to rebuild your file system image every time you make a change to the client ch root, which is a big thing with a lot of people. Uh, depending on the speed of your server, this may or may not be an issue. Um, so here we go. We're basically done. Uh, we're ready to have our first thin clients boot to our LTSP server. Hope uh, this was informative to you, and uh, happy LTSPing. <laughs>